Well, tonight, guys, we want to do an update on the Samoa Agreement. All right, we want to do an update on that. But tonight, I have with me Mr. Sheldon Yearwood, and he is the admin assistant for the TT Council of Evangelical Churches. And he is going to be joining us to talk to us about our agreement and, um, and the role that um, the church played in Trinidad and Tobago in getting the government there to hold off a bit. Now, what's happening is that there is a welcome, welcome, Sheldon. Welcome, first of all, are you hearing me clearly? I'm in church, there's worship going on. I know we can appreciate worship while we're doing this. We're being blessed in worship. So if it's a little loud, I'm going to try to be a bit louder. All right. So go, Okay. No here. problem. No problem. Okay. Once you can speak over it, that's okay. Yes, I There's can. a little, yes, um, okay. So, yeah. yes. All right. No problem. But what I just want to, of course, officially welcome you up to the Marcia Week Show. Pleasure. And we consider ourselves here the opposition because we have no, <laughs> we have no opposition in parliament. In Barbados, you know, I don't know if you're aware of that. Um, the government, the one party has all the seats. And so this platform becomes a place where the people of Barbados can express themselves. Right. And that is what happens on this platform. And we have been talking all this week about the Samoa Agreement. Um, actually, for a little bit from last week into this week and um what all the different countries that have signed on and one of the countries that we noted that did not sign at least as yet all of them say as yet um it's trinidad and tobago um, so sheldon i want to i want to ask you what um what was the role or did the, did the church in trinidad and tobago play a role in the government holding off on signing the Samoa agreement well, first of all, thank you very much for having me as I represent um, our leader of the president of the council, Reverend Dr. Desmond Austin. And the thing is, as believers, we have to understand strategically who we are um, as it pertains to the body of Christ. And I'm saying that to say that your net worth, the value of your net worth is based upon your networking. So your mm. network increases your net worth. And I'm saying that to say that a lot of networking would have been done over the years through Reverend Austin and the members of the council, not just with, with pastors and ministers of the gospel, but people in the business sector, the political mm -hmm. sector. And this would have been built over a period of time, even before this situation. Now, does that mean that everything, that they, that there were perfect relationships? Not at all. However, mm -hmm. because we would have built these relationships, there were those that gave the church a platform to speak. But there is one or two or three, as the case may be. Now, I just mm -hmm. want to bring something into context here. Um, there's a part of scripture that says, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. So the earth in itself is full. It is full of nutrients. It is full of minerals. So we represent God's earth. So we are full of potential as well. There are things in us. If you see a squatter, if you see a squatter coming on your land, would you stand and allow it? No, you won't. Because you understand the value of your land. Mm -hmm. What happened in this situation, this has been squatting on our land for some time now. Mm. So it was about being as proactive as we could. And one of the things that would have triggered the council to really, really push or go into second gear was this a situation with the Bogri Law where Jason Jones would have basically challenged our courts to repeal the Bogri Law, mm -hmm. right? And the council would have, would have really been challenging the courts to various avenues and a series of events would have unfolded since then. Now, what is also critical, I think, for us as Caribbean people, we cannot approach this battle in a vacuum that is just an lgbt issue or it is bigger than that mm. it is bigger than that we, we have a tendency to just be talking about you know the gay rights here but it's bigger than that it's about mashing up and destroying the foundation of the family as a unit 
and this is just one army that is being used to do that right so one of these things i want to pinpoint quickly so that's one so we would have been lobbying the government even before building relationships my pastor always says that um god is about relationships and everything else is just details mm. it's about establishing relationships even if it might be a hard relationship you try your best so therefore even though you may not agree they see you as someone relational we serve a relational god so we have to build relationships in circles that may have you uncomfortable ah pause there can you pause there sheldon because you're you're dropping some very very important truths there mm -hmm. um because you are saying that for in trinidad and tobago what you guys did is that you worked across the board you network the so it was a church it was different religions it was the um it was the, the business community you worked with everybody to lobby government concerning this agreement now let me just say this i'm going to give you a real scenario now, that, that, that does not mean that we would, people all supported us when Reverend Austin, this was in one of the earlier stages of the these discussions. This was when um, the the issue of um, child marriage came up, right? And the Hindus in particular kicked up about it as well. Reverend Austin, and this is why as the body of Christ, we don't understand what I would say, um, I want to say synergistic wisdom sometimes, because they called Reverend Austin as the head of the council to basically sit with them at a press conference because we all had a similar position that yes. we are against child marriage. So it was Reverend Austin, the late Sat Maraj, the Archbishop, and a couple others. And so the late, so the late Sat Maraj is a Hindu. Explain that to us. See, yes, he's he was a Hindu. Hindu. Yes, so you have Christian. Head. So let's let's make it clear as day. You had Christians, you had Hindu. And Muslim, the head of the and Muslim? Asha, right? Yeah. They all were part of a press conference, right? Wow. And so and they all had one common position that we are not for the child marriages. What that did not understand the dynamics of Trinidad and Tobago. When it comes to Hinduism, you have many, just as with Christianity, there are some key business people who are Hindus. There are some key business people who are Muslims. There are some key business people who are Christians. You know what will happen if all these business people were to shut down the country? So what I'm saying yes. is, if each of these religious sectors and their members who are business people, who are politicians, who are influencers in the country, if they took a position, listen, if you go ahead with child marriages, we are going to stop financing your campaigns or financing your government or financing the opposition, then yo, you know what, we're going to step back. And there were leaders in the Christian community who had an issue publicly. Um, there was a picture of Reverend Austin holding the hands of Sat Maharaj and, and they, they kind of form a, a chain link. And I'm saying as believers, we have to understand that we have influence. When Christ, and this is what I, I love about Jesus Christ, he did not conform to anybody's culture, but he spoke the truth of the gospel in the midst of any culture he went in. And he used parables that they could have related to to preach the same gospel. I'm saying we have to come to a place whereby we can be relatable to anyone despite their different um, religious belief or perspective and still get our truth across. So and hold a minute. Hold on. You, you are... you listen i tell you these young people are something else you know because he came to represent his bishop but you are you you tearing this thing up young man i love what you're saying can we listen carefully to to the model that trinidad used to lobby the government they joined with all different religions joined and that and also with the business community because all of those the hindus have strong business um business um people in the business community and they say listen we will shut shut down your political campaigns if you don't listen mm -hmm. did, did you all remain y'all we are y'all hearing what is going on uh, listen this is this is interesting this now, is somebody, interesting somebody's, businesses somebody, may somebody's not... asking if the business oh. identified themselves to the public did they do right that? so some of these 
some of these business people may not have done that, but they would have contacted people within political circuits and listen, we don't support this. So therefore, you would have found that that issue of the child marriage did not go past first gear or first stage. It got shut down early o'clock. It doesn't matter if they decided to go publicly or not. That's not what we're concerned because their various heads would have met with them and said, listen, we also understand and we don't support it. Now, let's fast forward to this issue with the LGBT. As I said, it has been squatting for some time. It's been our doorsteps. Now it's in our house. I'm not going to sit here and pretend for you that it's not an issue in Trinidad and Tobago. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Reverend Austin and the council has not have their challenges. But because of the networking over the years, there are mm -hmm. people that have been strategically aligned in political circles that have been what I would say our link in keeping this chain mm -hmm. strong, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's not as easy. So when this issue with the small agreement came around and with the, e, the ACP EU, the Prime Minister said a few days ago, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just ad-libbing here, that we don't have enough information to sign. And that's in, and, and the church, the church in Trinidad and Tobago, if it's one thing, when it comes to matters like these, we try, the council, at least I guess from the council perspective, they try to network with all the different heads. So whether it be Open Bible, whether it be Pawi, whether it be the Testament. Now, for example, the Open Bible, the council, TTEC, we have a representative of one organization. At one point in time, Pawi was there. Now we have two members of Open Bible. We have a member representing another organization. So we have a voice for every organization to hear what is the view of the council. And they will then now speak to their members of what's the view of the council. So right now we have a member from the Nazarene. The head of the Nazarene is also part of the council. So that's how we work and Pastor Austin. I mean, I could let me just quickly run through this for you. We have been working, I mean, for, for many years, but I want to check from 2016 where we started working with Rebecca Govaya and the Family Watch International. We have had several platforms. We invited ministers to these platforms, several forums over the years in 2021 and 2022. Keep your right? volume up. Keep your volume up. Yes. Sure. In 2021 and 22. We sent now. I delivered a brief. Here, sir. This is how determined we have been. I delivered a brief. I was walking through Port of Spain with a big box on my shoulder, mass here, right? And delivered briefs to all members of parliament outlining major concerns with the CSC and then the ECP EU agreement. This is 2021. Hold a minute. So, you guys have been working and lobbying the MPs. And everybody since 2021. One, Did you, right. uh, listen, listen, Barbados, listen but, up. Listen but here, up. The, here the catch, here the catch, Marcel. Only one minister at that time was 41 documents. If I, I think I have a copy of it somewhere here. I have these books in these in this cardboard box. I didn't meet them that day, but I ensured I did not leave until they gave me the guarantee. And we had a member of our church who works in parliament and she took the books and rest one on each of their desks before the parliament session began. So, so what even, this this book, what was the content of this book? Right, tell us this, quickly. I know you have, so, you have your child, you have to leave no, soon, but tell us I'm quickly. Certain. So basically, let me read what I have here. It was just outlining our concerns with the CSC. That's the comprehensive sexual education model. And there were various, I want to say, professional um, excerpts and documents to discourage um, having this implemented in our country. So we had different, re um, different research material, evidence-based material, so why the Caribbean and, by extension, Trinidad and Tobago should not do it. So we have here, as we mobilize our efforts in the region for the agreement not to be signed in its current form, so we actually had what you call a counter-proposal or a counter document which can be utilized in the school. So that's another thing though. That's another very important thing, Master. I want to encourage those in Barbados. We cannot go and say we don't want something if we can't offer a solution mm -hmm. or offer something that could um, counter their proposal. So we gave them a counter proposal one time 
to listen. You want to see CSC could work. All right, here what's happening. We have something that's even better. Take a look. Now, only one minister responded to us. That's yeah. Minister Fitzgerald Hines. But that does not mean that they did not get the document. We sent it. What you choose to do with that, that's on you. But you cannot say it was not delivered. And then after that, I sent a soft copy again via email. So we have, and, and again, we have people within parliament circles. It may be a few, but it takes just one pebble to skip on an ocean to cause a rippling effect. Sometimes you don't need many. You just need one. God said, I will send a man. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he just needs one or two or three. It took three Hebrew boys to wake up a nation. It wow. took one little boy to destroy Goliath. Sometimes they don't need many. You just need a few. Yes. So we wow. have a few people, right, within specific places that we have connected with. As I'm saying, we have to step out of the walls of the church. We have to step out of the walls of the church mm -hmm. and connect. If we are not saying that we support other religions and the religious beliefs. And when we say Christ sat with his sinners, doesn't mean that he's sitting with them and engaging in their sin, but he's sitting with them so they will feel that they will, I should say, let me put it like this. In order for Christ's love to shine in the hearts of men, the hearts of men have to understand Christ's love. And to mm. do that, you have to find a space and a place where they could relate to who Christ is. You, you know we what I love about what you're saying is um, is how how um, you guys, you call it synergistic um, yeah. alliance. Mm -hmm. You found what you had in common. And what you had in common was you were not for child marriage and you were not for the, the, the comprehensive sexuality education in the school. You were not for the Samoa agreement with, with the attachments, all these different things. You found that what you had in common, all religions came together and the business people who are from those religions mm -hmm. then made a demand on the on, on the, the government. And okay. again, not, not necessarily publicly, but that not, not it doesn't publicly. matter. Right. But we knew wow. after, well, whoever talked to whoever, at that point, that child law thing, it was just a non-issue after that. I mean, you have those who are still trying to push the narrative, but to say the court, the court shut that up. So I'm saying the work continues, the work continues, and we continue to have different forums. We invite ministers. Some don't come. One or two may send a representative, but we are going to keep pushing. But I want to just encourage those in Barbados, network, 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 network. It may not be someone you normally network with, but remember, you have what you call the various mountains of influence. You have the mountain of media. Mm -hmm. You have the mountain of business. You have the mountain of arts. You have various mountains. And God will position you in these various areas of influence in order to bring change. And if we don't network, then therefore the link that we love to talk about the body of Christ, different members in one body. Then if it's different members in one body, then won't each member have a different function? Every member, a leg cannot function as, as, as an arm. An arm cannot function as a toe. A toe cannot function as a wrist. They each have different function. But sometimes we want to function in the same way, in the same manner, then we are not going, we, are, we will not be able to really represent Christ, to represent the body of Christ so, as different just, members. But, but, but let, we just have two more minutes. So let me ask you something sure. here. What about the opposition? So you you were lobbying the government. Did you lobby the opposition as yes. well? We sent briefs to all of them. They did not respond. But as I said, this much I will tell you. We just have to keep networking and, and finding ways to reach them. That's the key. So, for example, my background is media. Mm -hmm. So I actually will also speak to them. I will go to events and I will tell people, listen, I would... I would find ways and means and spaces to interact and speak with people. We can't be afraid to speak. It doesn't matter who it is. You do not know who God will send you to. 
God could use anyone. Anyone. What I love, what I love about what you're saying um, here is the non-religious approach. Uh, what, what, you understand? Standing on the word of God, you made a non-religious um, approach to what what was presented. You saw because, it because as bigger God, than the, you were, you saw it as a threat to family, and you are you are <laughs> approached it from that that perspective. Did Christ ever preach religion? Anybody go through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation? Did Christ ever preach religion? The Pharisees and them got shut down for preaching religion. Did Christ ever preach? He preached relationship. And if we understand that it's about relationship and everything else is just details, then your religion is a detail for me because my relationship with God will surpass that. Right. So, so basically what we're saying, because, um, you know, my, our audience is not even, we have people on here from all different types of religion and some people who are not even religious at mm -hmm. all. Don't go to any church. They're not, we don't have, this is not even a religious program, but the point that we are making here is how Trinidad and Tobago, what they did, they mm -hmm. networked with all religions in Trinidad. Okay. They mm -hmm. network with businesses. That's what they did. Organizations, network. What was the phrase you used at the beginning? You said something about networking at the beginning of your presentation. Your, 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 your net worth increases based on your network. Mm -hmm. So your network, your net worth in terms of your value as a believer increases based on your networking. So we have the Full Gospel Business Association as well. The full gospel businessmen are businessmen from all over the country, from various types of businesses. We connect with them. The former board of the council, that's TTEC, had, um, had the, the head of the full gospel businessmen central division as one of its executive members. So again, whatever discussed on the level of the council, he will then take to his business members, and then they will take to their members, and that's how the word spreads. Now again, yeah. hear me. It's not easy. Reverend mm -hmm. Austin and the council, they have their challenges. But because of the networking, and even when he held hands with Satmaraj and them, there were leaders that condemned him. So, so when, he, leaders, when he held it, he held hands with the with the with the all Muslims, of them, all, and yeah, when they he held, did they, do, all, yeah, and they held hands together um no, to but, stand up against this, and then the happened. church, the church after, um after the press conference, the, the media just basically asked, okay. Can you all hold hands as a form of solidarity? No problem. And some leaders would have called. And I'm like, you all just not getting this. Yeah. This is bigger than religion here. So what? Mm -hmm. and you know the funny part about this? The funny part about this? Christ died for all of them. Yeah. Christ I, died yeah, for the everybody. Hindus. Christ died for the you Muslims. Know? Christ died for everyone. <laughs> Yet, again, this is not about I'm supporting your religion. But there's a song yes. we sang when we were in Sunday school, and you know we are Christians by our love. Love. And you found what you had in common and you networked around and that. Well, let me just work. say congratulations to Trinidad. There's so much that we need to learn here in Barbados. You know, um, people are saying, well, you know, without in our situation, the, the prime minister has the the government has the business and they have and the government has the churches. Um, I have the pastors. We have not had, believe it or not, apart from uh, Pastor Ferdinand, and anybody can correct me, but we have not had any official word that has come from any leader wow. of any organization in Barbados wow. on this Samoa agreement. We have not had one official word. So somebody not from the no, we haven't had anybody from the anglicans from the catholics from the pentecostal from the evangelical from none of them the only group that is speaking out against this is the rastafari group that as a, speak out as a group wow, we have not that's... had any grouping in, in no grouping and if i am wrong if i am wrong um, please correct me guys but I know Pastor Ferdinand comes on here and he speaks about that. I have not heard somebody from the Evangelical Association in Barbados standing up and speaking about, about the Samoa agreement. 
I have not heard anybody representing from the Catholic, from the Anglicans doing it either. So um, we have to say congratulations, TNT, because I want to know what is really wrong with Barbados. I'm so glad you came on tonight, my brother. I mean, Thank we continue you so to pray. Much. We continue to pray. Thank you so much. As I close, continue to pray for, for Barbados because there are still entities within the various ministries of government who are still trying to push the agenda. But we also have soldiers within that we network in who is also who are pushing back. So I want to encourage yes. you, one, increase your network. Increase your network. Find, number two, find a common ground. Find a common place where you can build a relationship. And three, ensure that those seven mountains of influence that you ensure that through the churches that you send people out to dominate or to have influence in these seven mountains of influence thank you so very much yes Martin. yes wow uh sheldon my oh wow this is really i really i hope people heard above the worship in the background <laughs> he's at church <laughs> um but you know um this is this is fantastic and i will uh, tell um your bishop what a great job you did and i'm sure he would not be surprised thank you for coming and enlightening no us we appreciate thank it thank We're you keep you all in prayer god bless you